Hi, my name is Cindy. This is my van. Her name's Dorothy. She's a GMC Savannah 2006. And we left my home in Missouri May 25th of this year. I bought it in September of 2020. And uh, I just ripped everything out and put junk in. Actually, this is a mostly thrift store and things people have given me and things I had in my house. At the thrift store I saw this chest and uh, I opened it up and it was a beautiful cedar and um, so I bought it for like $15 and I ripped it apart and cut it and made t table tops for this in my kitchen over here. Okay I, ha I got this also the same time I got this at a thrift store for like 12 bucks I got my pots and pans down here in another container just like this. I really have all I need. This is the Coleman propane stove. And what I have underneath here, and the only thing that would fit, and you can't see it from here, is I have a, I bought a propane tank that's about this tall, fits right in there, and it's about this big wide, and it's um, a five pound. And I just love it because I don't have to, you know, just a little over a month, it lasts five weeks. I worked with what I had. A friend of mine gave me the flooring because he was redoing his kitchen floor. This is my 30 quart fridge. And what I did was I found an old board downstairs and uh, I said, I can't keep pulling this fridge out, it's too heavy. Well, the bottom of those cheap plastic storage containers, mm -hmm. they come with these wheels that hook into these holes. I drilled four holes in the bottom of this piece of wood and stuck those wheels on there. So yeah, you don't have to spend money on fancy slides or anything like that. I mean, really just invent things. I, I, I bet this build, everything in it probably was, I hate, maybe 500. I could have come in and stripped this whole van, but I just didn't want to do it. You don't have to do it, you know? <laughs> I built it, I made sure I put the plywood in where I'd have, you know, low enough where I could put stuff underneath, yet I would have clearance on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just didn't want to go through the hassle. I've already done a couple of houses, remodeled and stuff, and I'm 63 now and I just don't want to do it anymore. You know, I yeah. want to do the bare minimum. So it's it, nice and I, it's very cozy. I love being in here, it's really cozy. It's home. It is definitely home. I mean, even when I first took it out, you know, uh, two years ago, I, I took it out with a, nothing in here and just threw a mattress on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is nice. <laughs> yeah. I like small spaces. So. I just love these curtains because they were such bright colors. And, uh, and then I kind of just built the van around. I got rid of everything I own, except they do have little touches from my family and stuff. My sister made this. I taught her how to cross stitch and that was the very first one she made. And what's neat about this is this is my grandma's house. That's why we loved it so much. Take one floor off, but it was a three. It just looked just like that with a porch swing out front. But uh, there's little cats in the window and stuff. So I'm not in this van alone. I have three cats. <laughs> I know three cats is a lot of cats, but you know, three is my sweet spot. I've always had three cats. So. Um, and they do really well. People would really be surprised at how well cats do in vans. Um, I didn't just throw them in there and take off. You gotta kind of spend a month or so letting them get used to the van. So this was an old cat tree. And instead of throwing it away, I brought it out here and I made, I made them a little area here. And I put hinges on these shelves so they open up and I can get to my clothes. These are all my clothes back here. And then I have a box of books there. And uh, I just set it up where I can use this area down here. And I made this for them so they could look out the window and they never do. But it's nice because I can open the back doors and the wind comes through and, and it keeps it really drafty in here when it gets hot. I have several nooks for them, something you need to do, places they can ro run to if they get scared. And, um, and another thing I did was I built a half wall here, and you can't really see it from here. And this is a window screen I built, 
and I screen that in there and that way I can open those back doors without the cats getting out. There I added the roof fan because all it had was a vent before and I added this roof fan and it makes all the difference in the world. So when it gets hot I can keep the cats cool. Everything's about keeping them happy and safe you know I mean pretty much <laughs> I would be in all different places if it weren't for the fact I have to stay here and about around 8,000 feet to keep your pets cool. Um, the kitty litter box is on the foot foot area of the passenger seat down on the floor and they just hop down in there. You can take cats with you okay but I have these dark jackets and they were just covered with cat hair. So what I did was I went to a dollar store and bought a shower curtain liner and just threw it up over this and it problem solved. All right. I carry about 10 gallons of water. This is six I keep in here. And uh, these things are neat. So from the uh, cat tree, I had this, it's three, three of these. And what I did was, this is not bolted down, so I can move these around and, and put new ones on. He loves to climb this and gives them exercise and everything. So I have a kitten, and I just went ahead and I'm really paranoid because cats have to learn this is their home. Okay, you can't just take them out and keep the door open. You will lose a cat if they're not secure and this is their home. I just prop it in, and if I ever, and this is the cool part, if I ever have to go to a mechanic, so I put this here, and I'm not going to do it here, but I can put it between the two seats, raise this all the way up, Ooh. bungee corded on both sides, and the cats can stay in the back of the van, and mechanic can work on the, on the van, but this came up, it comes all the way up, and it blocks off this front, because... That way, a mechanic can open and shut the door. They don't have to work. That'd be great with dogs, too. Oh, you know, it would. Yeah, this is... A friend gave me the mattress. It's like a three-inch three, three inch mattress, four-inch mattress, and I have a memory foam. I have a memory foam uh, on top of it. But it's a regular size twin bed. I have to actually take it into the windows because I'm tall <laughs> to, and sleep at a slight angle so I can stretch out. And that plywood, it's just a three, three quarter inch plywood. I took it all the way over and uh, of course designed this. It's all setting on top of that plywood there. Okay, for the bathroom, I do what everybody else does. I have a bucket. When I'm traveling, I stick it under the bed here. And uh, a double bag. I haven't used it too much because I've been in a park, state park. Mm -hmm. But a double bag. And what I use is um, pet bedding from Walmart, mm -hmm. so cheap, the pine, and just bag it up. And then I have a um, coffee container I use for a number one, you know, and it's also in there with a little diverter. Nice. That's it, I mean, keeping it simple. Everybody says, you should get this, you guess you got that. And they go, this is no work at all. <laughs> I mean, this is nothing. I'd rather go to the bathroom in here than I would the toilets in most places. In pine bedding, there is no smells. You know, it's really wonderful. That is a 240. It was the first thing I bought. I use it for um, lights and the fan. I have a Bluetti EB55 I got. Here's that. I wanted a refrigerator. I want to live the life simply, but I don't want to be miserable. So one of the things I wanted was a refrigerator, but I knew to get a refrigerator, you had to buy something, a battery, a solar generator, run it, not cheap, neither is the refrigerator, and you had to buy solar panels to charge the battery. So it ended up costing, well, I thought $1,000, but it ended up being like 850 for all three of them. Okay. There is insulation going through the ceiling. Mm. There is not, I found out last winter, not much insulation in the walls here. Oh. I found out there's like a space between the metal and the, that wall there that's empty, and it's like this big. So I went ahead and put Reflectix up because that's all I had. But what I did was I use it, I store my coats. And uh, right now I have some winter clothes and other things down in there. And I took uh, Reflectix and I just put some flat, uh, fleece. And I, I've got two of them. One to go in this window over here mm -hmm. and one. And I actually put these up every night so nobody can look in. 
I'm just stick them right up in there. They're very dark tinted. Nobody can see in this unless I have a light on. My dad made this. He was a woodworker and he actually, over 10 years ago, he went out in his pickup truck. After my mom passed away, they got, he got rid of his RV and fixed up the back shell of his pickup truck to travel. He made all these beautiful, you know, curved wood things and I took one of them. My sister has a pickup truck now. And I went, wanted to bring something of his along because he was a woodworker after he retired. He said I have a little touch of everybody in my van. My brother made this uh, cutting board. I won't use it because it's too pretty. <laughs> and what do you have in your garage here? Oh my gosh. Well, back here underneath this is my butane. This is all my tools. But I, I couldn't give them up. I brought them all. You never know when you're going to need them. So I took the plastic off, plus it was limiting my space. Yeah, so you can store things here. Right. And it doesn't look really nice, but I have a lot of storage. And as you can see, I can keep these doors open because this is here. Uh, when I'm not in a state park and I'm out boondocking somewhere, what do I do with the cat litter? And my own litter for that matter. It's got a lid. It's just a galvanized trash can. I put it up by the cat litter box by the front tire of the, the van and every time I change the cat litter I put it in a bag and put it in here and put the heavy lid on it. What's really cool about being out here and what I heard was neat and is, is the people you meet. <laughs> and I, I'm making friends and I have more friends now than I did when I lived at home. Not you true. know and and me, the people are just, I'm meeting wonderful people, you know, and they tell me things. I'm gathering information, you know, and that's, that's really cool. This life is really simple, and I really like, it is for me, you know, and, uh, uh, but it is not always easy. There's a difference there. And uh, I run into things like I came here, and because of the wildfires, all the places I had spent time writing down and saying I'm going to go to, we're all closed. So I am in the state parks, which I was going to stay part of the time, but I also wanted to go out, you know, and stay on a service road out in the forest too, away from people. And I haven't been able to do that because of the wildfires. You have to adjust to things that come up. And that was one of the main things. I'm sure there's other things. I just deal with them like I do at home you know something comes up you just deal with it you know because I am traveling by myself I have a niece that watches over me and a friend in Wisconsin and uh, she was watching me over me last winter and I kept going places where there's no cell reception and she would get nervous because she wouldn't hear from me from me for days so I got it went ahead and got a, a Garmin uh, in reach and if I'm someplace I can't tell her, I just go outside and, and send her, they have pre preset messages you can send saying, I'm okay, all is well. I don't have any fears, really, nothing irrational at least about going out camping by myself. And I'm always afraid something's going to break down. That was my biggest fear. And that was something I have spent the last two years trying to get over, you know, yeah, well, I could break down at home and I would be in trouble. You know, I'd be in the same situation. So there's really, you know, I've got insurance. I got extra insurance for that kind of thing. And, and I, I don't worry about it. I, I think it at Bob Wells' channel, they said, um, if you break down, you're in your home. You have food. You have, you have everything you need in here. So what's to worry about? So, and like I said, I don't have any fear of like um, uh, people trying to break in here or something. I mean, it's there, it can happen, but it's not something I worry about. I try to be smart. I have left places. I just leave. I, I've left places that I've been camped at when people have come in and I don't, maybe they're too noisy or they're a bunch of guys that are going to get drunk that night. I'll just leave. Very simple. I drive into a place and it looks kind of sketchy. I just don't stay there. I mean, you know, I just you listen to, listen to that voice inside. I don't watch anything that's just constant 
violence and things that are ha bad things that are happening. I mean, I only have so much life left to live here, and I refuse. <clears throat> I, I see it. I just absolutely refuse to be fearful anymore. I just won't do it. And um, if you watch that stuff, you think, I, I run into people all the time. Oh my gosh, you, you know, this is happening and that is happening. The world's going to hell in a handbasket. Well, it isn't for me. Not in my world. I do know what's going on as far as major things. But in my world, um, I and I may be crazy, but I believe there's more good people out there than there is bad. All they put on the news and all they put on social media and all that stuff is the bad stuff. And they're just feeding fear to people. And it's sad mm -hmm. because we're just like, you know, we're just like hemmed in and, and just sitting there shivering and scared of everything. There are more good people, and this is just my opinion, but they're more good than there are bad. Uh, uh, people that are just starting out or are thinking about it is the reason I'm doing this video. Um, especially the people that are kind of scared and they want to go out and do it. And I hate to sound like everybody else, but you just need to just start. Just do it. And I would suggest what I did uh, is I went out for one night. And I was slept out in my van in my carport. But you you do get used to it. And it's really nice, you know. I didn't stay at any state parks or stuff. I went out into the woods mm -hmm. when I did it, the free places. I was tired of living where I was living. I've been there for in that area for 60 years. And I just wanted something different. I wanted a new life <laughs> is what I wanted. I can do that. Can you just get rid of the old life and get a new one? That's what I was thinking in my head. I was tired of the weather there because I lived in the Midwest and it was hot and humid and you know I wanted I was trying to I kept going on onto the GPS trying to and looking up trying to find a place that had the perfect weather all year long. <laughs> I'd moved to and you know it doesn't exist. And plus I had to take care of my dad when he had cancer and stuff. Not had to, I did take care of him. And uh, it kind of makes you realize that you could life is short. You know, you could go at any time, you know. It wasn't extreme, but it was just added to my feeling. Yeah, and what motivated me since January is um, I wanted to know what it felt like to be free. And it was, it's what motivated me since January. And, it, and so I just dived right in, and every time something came up to get in my way, I was just like, no, I want to be free. <laughs> And it was really, it's, it's, it was something I had to do. If I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? You know, I'll never find out what it feels like. So that was kept me going and everything, just get it, get every, all the obstacles out of my way. You know, I'm, I'm going out and I'm going to be free. And um, that's what I did.